Greg Cazillo, Fro Knows Photo. Dot com. I'm going to go over snapshots and history today. And here's the background on how, on how I ended up choosing this this week. Uh, number one, I didn't know how to edit this photo. Uh, started playing with it and did this and did that and did the other thing. And, you know, going back and forth. And I said, you know what? This I'm doing this the wrong way and going about this the wrong way. So I'm going to use the snapshots feature in the develop module in order to show me those different versions. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I took this photo a few weeks ago of, of an old car. I think it's an old Buick. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody would know better than I just by seeing the hood ornament. Uh, but I believe it was a Buick. Anyway, uh, say I wanted to adjust my exposure, make it brighter. And then bring in my blacks, uh, maybe drop my clarity, something like that. All right, we obviously see that new history states are being created for each one of those items. Now we can go back in those history states and they are shown, or we can go forward. Now, as we roll over them, they are also shown in our navigator window here. So that's a nice little feature. I usually turn that thing off because I believe the develop module runs a little faster with a closed, but in this time I wanted to show that you, as you roll it over, and this works for your presets too, uh, as you roll over it, you can show those. So, we can then create a new snapshot, just by clicking this little plus button, create snapshot. I'm just gonna call it number one, and I'm gonna hit create. Now, I wanna do a reset to go back to the original. All right, so now I'm back to original. If I want to go back to this snapshot one, I can then pick snapshot one. Now, if I go back in my history, say to back here, okay, and then make another adjustment somewhere, say in my fill light, okay, it has deleted those extra history steps that were in here. So you got to keep that in mind as you're using it. it. It's it's a linear thing, and it's what if you go back, it's going to remove all the other ones and add this one in its place. So keep that in mind as you're working. Again, snapshots can be added at will, and then go back and forth, and then you can show them with this little navigator window. It works really really well. So I'm going to do another reset, and so I have my first snapshot. There's my first one, my first edit. Let me try another one. Let's try a split tone. Oops, I forgot my black and white button. Let's try a split tone with a little bit of green, with a really lot of saturation. And how about some yellow with about half saturation. Green is actually pretty cool. Let's back off on my saturation a little bit. Uh, not bad, but I think we need a contrast in color. Ooh, definitely dig in the blue. Another snapshot. Green, blue. Very nice. I like it a lot. And like I said, now I can go back in between the two of these, or three, or five, or six, and they'll always be saved. And so it just makes it a really nice, easy way to go back and forth, especially if you just can't figure out how to, you know, which way you want to edit it. How do you want to edit it? Uh, to me, this works a little bit neater and a little bit nicer than using virtual copies, although some people do prefer to, you would prefer to use a virtual copy. So also keep that method in mind of having a few of them, say a black and white and a color and a this and a that. If you were wanted to export multiple versions, then you would definitely want that multiple copy or that virtual copy system so that it would export two or three or five or ten or however many you wanted to edit uh and then you would be well upon export you would have all of those greg Cazillo, fro knows photo.com see ya